Hi everybody, thank you for being here. An important update today on Aaron. It rapidly intensified to a category five overnight, bombing out as we call it in meteorology from a tropical storm to a cat five. Winds are now sustained at 160 miles per hour. The gusts are up to 190 miles per hour. Folks, I'm watching this slow, slow system try to turn and like a Ferrari, uh, those turn quickly. This is a bus, folks. It is going to be tough to turn turn this system and it is a critical day for Aaron today as we watch that turn. Look at the symmetry in this system as we're watching it. Folks, I drop a number of these videos per day and track all things severe weather including the secondary wave behind this one that some of the models are trying to hint that could form as well. So if you're uh, an avid weather watcher, if you have interest in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, anywhere in the Gulf, you need to follow this page. I am a passionate meteorologist who's been on TV for 20 years tracking severe weather. I uh, will let you know with a lot of confidence what I do know, and I will be quick to tell you what I don't know at any given time. In this case, we now know that Aaron is a dangerous storm system. It is packing a punch as it moves toward the west. The Caribbean islands, though they're south right now from St. Martin toward Puerto Rico right now, are getting some heavy rain and tropical storm conditions uh, just on the outskirts of this monster system. You can see the track here as we look at our boxes is it's moving west and slightly northwest. We need it to begin to ride that ride around the Bermuda High, and we have every intention that it will. There's not much guidance here that shows that it will not. In fact, there's a big grouping here between Bermuda and the Outer Banks. Toward the west would be an outlier, but it is certainly something that we're looking out for. Let's look at the European. Actually, let me go back here. I want to show you the European ensembles. A good agreement with them good agreement with the GFS ensembles, but how close does it get? And here's an important designation, folks. The pressure inside of Aaron right now is 919, according to the last pass by the National Hurricane Center hurricane plane. Uh, let me put it where it's at right now. So according to our model, we should have a pressure at 976. Well, it's 919 right now. It's significantly, I mean, significantly stronger than the models had it earlier. What does that do? Well, common sense, previous thinking would say it should help it turn to the north more because it's growing higher. But there's also the argument that could be made that this could also send uh, Aaron a little bit more to the west. And the reason being is it's hard to turn a big storm system that's such a monster like this. It kind of carves out its own path. It just sits there and wants to go to the west, southwest. And this storm has consistently hugged the southwest track of the models and the hurricane center cone. So no fear just yet, but it is a trend to watch. And today is a critical day. If we don't start to see this turn as expected, Tomorrow, you'll probably see that cone go a little more to the west. Does it make landfall with the United States? I think that's still a rare opportunity, a rare possibility, but it is something that I'll be dialed in on and watching it for you. So the new European wants to take this as a monster storm. It finally blows it to its current strength, where it is right now, way up here on Tuesday. So a little, little late on the uh, intensification, but the path is what matters here, and it shows it safely going between Bermuda and the Outer Banks. But Again, the, lo the longer it waits to turn, the closer to the west it's going to get. Does it scrape up against the United States? That is the next question we have to answer. And right now, our models are saying no, it safely goes to the west. But they also have misinterpreted how strong this is. And that's normal, folks. You'll get storms that blow up really fast, and the models take a minute to grasp that. You can see how those core winds that are 140, 150, 160 miles per hour as this system will cycle from Cat 5 to Cat 4 to Cat 3, just kind of back and forth because a hurricane cannot sustain uh, that for very long. Also, when you get an eye replacement cycle, when the eye kind of sheds itself like a snake, uh, it can't sustain a, an eye wall that long for that strong. Where does the new eyewall pop out at? Does it change the track at all? Probably not. We still have some room for error before it would in impact the United States based on the current track. But you know, every bit of this matters because of the waves, folks. The waves on a hurricane this big and this strong are the, the equivalent of a five to six story building. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, that's like from the movies, folks. So keep that in mind is, is we need to watch for any kind of deviation. Here's the European deterministic wind gust swath. Keeps it safe keeps it safely offshore with the exception of the Outer Banks. 
So that's certainly some good news there. Uh, just for giggles, let's kind of look and see if we have some of our other model data in, you know, the NAM model just for, for giggles keeps it out there. Um, let's see if we can get the 12 kilometer one gives us a little bit more data. It keeps it farther to the west, but our high resolution models, we're getting into the, the wheelhouse of them. So again, just something to watch. How do they start playing a role in this? How, how close do they show this uh, system getting? Um, let's go back to the last 12Z run of that, and let's map that out here. All right, let's go to the HRR, wind gust swath. And let's go to the AI version. Got 40 mile an hour winds at this pass on the Outer Banks. So again, if it tracks more to the west, there'd be higher impacts. The swells, folks, the the the, the breakers, we're talking four to five, even six foot waves uh, all up and down Florida to Georgia to the Carolinas uh, beginning early this upcoming week. And the rip currents, folks, uh, a silent killer. I, I mean, it is, it is one of those weather phenomenons that... Um, Unfortunately, it can be sneaky like heat. Uh, it's one of the top rated, uh, it just leads our lists for weather phenomenon that are so dangerous uh, each year. So that is something that we'll have to watch up and down the uh, eastern seaboard here as we're going to be looking at it. So as we look closer at the highlighted area here from the European model guidance, it too shows a curve, but how strong it is now, where it's at now is going to be a key role in these models. Do they have any kind of shifts or does this major intensity even more so keep it out to sea? Those are the questions we have to answer here today. All right, so how about secondary system number one? We'll get to that in a second. Here's the new GFS coming in. I think we may have access to at least the first few frames of the new GFS. Here we go. All right, so at this point, Let's compare it to the last run. About the same spot. So almost identical spots on the last three runs of the GFS, keeping us in line with it going just offshore. But the National Hurricane Center, the Climate Prediction Center, they, they've shown some risks that we need to stay dialed in on, and the main development region looks to get active again, according to our GFS model. Now, it shows something getting into here and then tracking over toward the Gulf while here's Aaron. So do we have another system that we need to watch? That's going to be the question that we have to unpack here uh, beyond Aaron. And, you know, this time of year, you kind of need to stay dialed in on, on all threats. And let's, let's watch Aaron pass by safely toward the mid-Atlantic right there. But let me flip the model back one. So Aaron's going away. You see that little low pressure system approaching the Lesser Antilles by this upcoming Thursday. So six days out, not a week or two out. This is in the wheelhouse of our models. Shows something going into the Caribbean, becoming a little more organized as it heads toward Jamaica and Cuba. Um, watching it. It starts to get into hurricane strength as it enters the Gulf, and according to this, becomes a strong hurricane heading toward Louisiana and Texas uh, by uh, next Friday. So we'd have um, you know, about a week to track that system. It'd be a slow mover, but that would be right at the beginning of our Labor Day weekend. How about the GFS model? GFS model from one run ago takes it over the Keys, southwest Florida, and then brings it in the Gulf and takes it up through New Orleans, maybe Destin, Pensacola to the west. All right, how about three runs ago? It had a similar look, except for it was East Coast. We've been here, done that. How many times did Aaron show us a similar look? But here's the deal. The GFS model sniffed it out early. Uh, we had a storm to track. It just didn't have the location pinned down right, which I, honestly, I would not expect it to have the location pinned down right just yet. We're gonna need to watch that. How close does it get? This would be bad news for the Turks and Caicos, all of the Bahamas, and then the East Coast of Florida, Savannah, Georgia, Charleston, South Carolina, right before Labor Day, Thursday, Friday before Labor Day. So the European does not buy this, folks. That's the good news. Uh, the deterministic model run has a low pressure, but it almost follows identical to air and stays out to sea. I'd be just fine with that. Uh, the AI version of the European has a similar low pressure, kind of doing that and then going up. So European's not buying it, but it says, hey, there is a low pressure. And, and honestly, that's a signal. We need to know that there is a signal there that we need to look out for. 
But folks, it has been so critical today to be able to see the hurricane hunters fly into this storm. They've been dropping these um, you know, drop zones into the storm, 13 of them here, 15 of them there. They crisscross this powerful Cat 5 hurricane. Can you imagine that? But it gives us critical data. How low is the pressure? 920. It's on 919 earlier. 926 in here. The wind's on all sides of it just intense. And that gives us that peak wind where we saw it climb way up here from where it was to where it is now uh, to, to a Cat 5 status. So that's the, that's the concerning part here is we know that it is a strong storm system. We know that it is one to watch closely and we know that, that we need to stay dialed in on it. So folks, thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me that you're here. I just want to give you a few shout outs to thank you for being here and to continue to support my channels and support me. Um, Anastasia says, I really like how thorough your reports are. The more I know, the safer I feel. Uh, Lee Harkins, uh, thank you for respecting our time with obvious care for us, no nonsense and sharing of important aspect of our lives. Thank you. Thank you for noticing that. And uh, thank you for, for following. I uh, certainly do uh, make every effort to do that. I try to give you all the clear data. Um, not hype. Uh, you know, I do show you all the data. Some people call that hype. I disagree. Um, I'm, I'm very honest with what I know and very honest with what I don't know. But my goal is to always give you uh, early heads up. We got Clearwater Beach in the house. Uh, you certainly don't want to see any more flooding after Haleem. Uh, hi, Chris, watching from Barbados. I pray for everyone to be safe. Me too. Thank you, Wanda. And please tell your family and friends. We'll keep you safe in Barbados this year. Watching from Georgia, Georgia in the house. Thanks, Chris. Love what you do. We watch every morning on the eastern shore of Maryland. We're always watching for a storm to run up the Chesapeake Bay and make landfall from the Atlantic. Whew. Yeah, a few of those models did show that earlier this week, didn't it? Uh, thankfully, it is not showing that anymore, but you know to stay dialed in on it. Will and I are here from Brunswick, Georgia. Thank you for these very informative videos. They are the best. You bet. Thank you, Will. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, you're my official weather spotters there for Brunswick, Jekyll Island, uh, St. Simons as well. Uh, Eastern North Carolina, I love your channel. Thank you, Lisa. Following from Wilmington, thank you for the fantastic coverage. You bet. Chris, thank you for a great update. Best to you and your family. Checking in from North Carolina. I'm always concerned about the storms out there. After living in Florida for 17 years, you can see, yeah, you can say that again. They change directions quickly. They sure do. Thank you for the recognition of the severity of the damage from West North Carolina and Helene. Just the recognition in itself helps the confidence that we have in you. You've seen it firsthand, and I'd bet you participated in recovery efforts. You bet. Uh, Paul, I mean, it, you know, seeing it, my folks, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fifth generation apple grower's son. Uh, that's what my family has done for a living uh, for five generations. And we were right there in the heart of it, uh, you know, five miles from Chimney Rock. Uh, just really, really rough to see uh, how it, it in places still looks like weeks after the storm. So we're getting better, we're recovering, and it is a fantastic apple season. So farmers are ready for that. Um, thank you. Thank you for your your recognition of that. Um, I, I appreciate you following. Uh, Bladenboro, North Carolina in the house. Barcelona, Spain, keeping watch over our Florida property through your streams. Thank you. That means the world to me. I will keep you posted. We're worldwide, folks, and that means the world to me. Winsboro, South Carolina. Salvo, North Carolina on the Hatteras Island. Jacksonville, Florida. Resident of Merritt Island, currently in Nebraska. I'll be back next week. Enjoy the broadcast. Thanks from Edneyville. Hi there. You know all about Halim, right there near my family's place. Uh, thanks from New Hampshire. Comprehensive and useful. Strong work. Thank you, Karen. Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you for your time and effort. You bet. Thank you for all the updates of the first hurricane this year. Good job you guys are doing. Thank you. I sure appreciate it. We have a great team. Thank you from St. Augustine Beach. Watching from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Thank you, Patricia. My weather nerd appreciates the detailed information. Uh, watching from right here in the upstate. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Nashville, Tennessee, you do a great job. Stephanie says, hi, watching every day from Houston, Texas. Keep us updated. Well, thank you. Watching in Massachusetts, headed to Walt Disney World on Wednesday. Oh, my. Take, take me with you. Swing on by Greenville. Pick me up. Uh, thank you for reporting the storm without panic. Very informative and easy to understand. You bet. Uh, happy to do that. Uh, the daily updates on this storm without hyping the situation for clicks. You bet. No, no doubt about it. I 
I do not do that. I, I try to make an honest effort to it. You know, sometimes by giving information that is dramatic, people will think it's hype, but I try to drown that stuff out because um, you know, I just keep doing me, right? Watching uh, from near Boston, Massachusetts, I value your thoroughness, especially compared to other TV meteorologists. Well, thank you, Catherine. I sure love what I do, uh, both on TV and online. Uh, and, you know, I've done it for 20 years that way. I, I, the way I'm here on TV or online here is the way you'll see me on TV. So uh, kind of a no-nonsense approach. I tell you what it is, when it is. I tell you when it's time to be concerned and when it's not time. I live on Cape Cod. Hurricane Aaron is just increasingly large ocean cruiser touring the Atlantic. Aaron's brother is lurking behind her. Needs to watch closely as well. Those of us who live in Florida, Gulf states, and the eastern seaboard. Yeah, you bet. We got to watch that. Uh, thanks from Connecticut. Tampa, Florida is in the house. We got uh, the Northeast and Puerto Rico watching right now. Connecticut's in the house. Massachusetts in the house. Carolyn from Philadelphia. God bless you, Michael. You too. Watching from Tampa Bay, I love this channel. Thank you. I uh, truly appreciate you. Uh, I want to know how good or bad, or rather not know, uh, rather than not knowing at all. I see what you mean. Thank you for, for watching there. South Florida here, thank you. We got Oak, Live Oak, Florida. Thank you, brother. Wilmington, North Carolina. Deland, Florida. The Chicago Burbs, thanks for the update. All right, Chicago, thanks for tuning in. Uh, vacationing in St. Martin and watching closely. Boy, you're, you're getting some rain right now. Please, in the comment section of this video, if you can, if you're in St. Martin or the islands right now, give me some reports. And if you can, send me a picture. I'd love to see what's going on, some video that I could use on my next video. Uh, but be safe. Be safe while you're doing that. Brooklyn, New York. Um, Commonwealth of Dominica. 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 Sometimes I say that incorrectly, so thank you for your kindness. Smoky Mountains here, Winston-Salem, Chapel Hill, Lakeland, Florida, Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico again. We got South Florida, South Carolina on a cruise ship, 9-1. And we've got Sanford, Newberry, South Carolina, Holden Beach, Pensacola, Jacksonville. We got Goldsboro, Aurora, Illinois, Wilmington, North Carolina, South Carolina in Charleston, the Big Bend of Florida, Puerto Rico, Midway, North Carolina, Charlotte, Hampton, Virginia, Cherryville, Lincolnton area, Jacksonville, Florida, Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, Blue Ridge in Virginia, downstate in Mount Pleasant, don't like the fringes of the storms, yep, we got to watch that closely for you, so far so good, Port St. Lucie, Florida, I love to watch and see if the second system becomes anything. Yeah, you and me both. We'll be watching it closely. Can't wait for the new models to come out later today, and I'll update you. Orlando, Florida, I appreciate you. I want to know, too, do these things almost have a mind of their own if it makes it to the Gulf Stream? They tend to travel a similar path. You know, you got to watch them closely where they go, but they tend to have a similar path to where they go uh, around that Bermuda High. Southeast Georgia, we got Florida, Vero Beach. I'm going on our Bakes vacation tomorrow. Be careful, Bailey. Yeah, we'll keep you posted. So far, so good. I would not cancel if my family had plans. I'd be dialed in and watching it, though. St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, you and Brad Panovich here in uh, North Carolina are my sources. Yeah, Brad's one of a kind, man. Uh, tell you what, he's, uh, he's, he's one of the good ones. Headed straight to Florida coast. Why is no one saying this? No, I, you know, I think it's going to go you know, well east of the Florida coast. I think you're safe right now, but of course we're watching it. If it doesn't start turning today, that's when we're going to have some control, uh, some problems. Uh, Simpsonville and Anguilla. I say that right? Anguilla watching. Lucianne, thank you. Um, we got Alabama in the house. You're the only one who is realistic. Well, thank you. I <laughs> appreciate that. Charleston, South Carolina, Virginia Beach, Parrish, Florida. Will it reach the Gulf? Orlando, uh, Aaron will reach the U.S. Mary, I sure hope not. I absolutely hope not, folks. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Cat5, Aaron, how close does it get? That's the thing that we've got to iron out in the day to come. And folks, if you're new to this channel, please go ahead and like this video. Comment in the comment section now with where you're watching from. Subscribe to this channel and turn on those notifications. It's the best way to stay safe in situations like this. I will keep you posted. If you don't follow my channel already, I'd appreciate it if you would. God bless you guys. Stay safe today, and I will keep you posted. Don't worry about that.